This succulent is, it's essentially like a larger version of sedum rubertinctum or sedum pocket phylum, um, pork and beans, or jelly beans. I actually haven't found an exact ID on it. But what I want to show you about it is I have not been watering it very regularly. And you can see all of these aerial roots off the stems. Now for like sedum rubertinctum, that's really normal for it to get aerial roots. Sometimes it's just caused by humidity in the air. Sometimes it can be caused by underwatering, which is definitely the case here. And then sometimes they just grow. There are some succulents that tend to just grow aerial roots more than others. But what I wanted to show you is the aerial roots in conjunction with these lower leaves that are just completely dried up. I mean, you can see all of those dried up dead leaves in there. Um, that is definitely a sign of being underwatered. And I have these under grow lights about 10 hours a day. Originally they were actually on 12 hours a day and I realized it was too much. But see how, how they're kind of like burning here on the ends? The, the succulent is still actually fairly healthy, like it's gonna keep growing, but this damage is from getting hot or getting too much light from the grow lights. And I'm using LEDs, so they're not getting that hot. But um, it's just not loving life under the grow lights. And you'll find that there are some succulents that tend to do better under grow lights than others. But the main thing that I wanted to point out to you is if you see a lot of leaves dropping off the bottoms of your succulents like this, um, it's one of two things. One, it's underwatered, which this one is, or there are a few varieties like aeoniums that will do this when they go into a more dormant state. So like the black rose aeonium, for example, it will lose most of its leaves leading up to dormancy or when, it, when it's in dormancy and then it'll grow them back when it's actively growing again. But if you are seeing aerial roots and if you're seeing a bunch of your leaves dry up and fall off, that is absolutely a sign that you need to be watering more frequently. And what's interesting is you can see this little leaf here, it actually kind of looks a little bit yellow, but see how it's also deflated? So if normally if you see something that's yellowing, I would say that's a sign that it's getting too much water. But because all of the leaves are dropping and dried up as they're dropping, and then we're seeing that burn on the edge and you know a bunch of aerial roots, that all indicates that it is not getting enough water. So just keep that in mind as you're looking at your plants. Keep your eye out for lower leaves that are dropping, for aerial roots, for early signs of burning, and that'll help you know whether or not you need to give your succulent more or less water. All right, I finished that last segment of recording and then I thought, they're gonna ask me what I did with this. So with the aerial roots, you can leave them on if you want or you can rip them off. I kinda did a little bit of both. But what I did do, and I don't know if you can tell the difference, but I did remove all of those dead leaves and I cleaned up all up off of the top of the soil here. There's still, like you can see little bits of turfus and stuff that's just from my soil, but um, I did clean up all of the dead leaves. And what I'm gonna do next, and I'll show you when I'm done, is I'm actually gonna cut off the tops of most of these because they just don't look that great. And if I cut off the top, then they will start growing more offsets at the bottom. So it'll just help them get bigger and better. So cutting them off, it's just what it sounds like. You just reach in with some scissors, cut it off, and then you wanna let these dry out and scab over. So um, you can see that end is really fresh, nice green cut, and you can see inside it's green, it's all healthy, so definitely not overwatered. And I'm just gonna do that to most of these that are pretty tall. I wanna leave some stem on the bottom um, because I want new growth to come up here. So I'm gonna leave a fairly substantial amount. Ideally, you would actually leave leaves attached to this too, because that helps it um, absorb more light um, and go through the whole photosynthesis process. But it doesn't have leaves, so we're just gonna see how it goes. But it didn't look super attractive anyway. So I'm just gonna cut these all off and then Eh, I might leave those two, three-ish, because they're still fairly low to the ground. You can see a little baby in there. 
So then what I'm gonna do is I'll just wait for this, wait for these to dry over, to scab over, and then uh, probably tomorrow night, I'll come back in and plant them all up and show you what that looks like. I'm also gonna be cutting up this ghost plant. So the same way that I did that like larger sedum rubitinctum, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this one up too. And it, again, doesn't have leaves on the bottom, but ghost plant is one that is incredibly prolific. I am quite confident that even on these uh, bare stems down here, that once the tops are cut off, that we'll grow new plants. So it'll be fun to see how that progresses. So time slipped away for me, and suddenly it's three weeks after I cut these cute little babies off of the mother plant. And some really exciting things have happened. So you can see some of these have grown roots. A few of them did have some little aerial roots on them, but they have actually started to grow roots. These have just been sitting on a counter. They've been under grow lights, but they haven't had any water. However, I did water the original plant and it has some new babies growing on the stems already. So three weeks in and it has some new babies growing on it. And I'm gonna go ahead and pot up the rest of these cuttings. So you wanna wait until the end is calloused over or dried off, which these definitely are. So that's very dried out. And I'm just gonna go ahead and just stick them in here. I'm gonna try and space them out a little bit so that the arrangement is kind of filled in. And that way over the next few weeks, we'll just have a really nice full arrangement of this little guy, which I actually have been trying to find the ID on it. So if you know what it is, let me know. It looks like sedum rubrotinctum or jelly beans but it is actually not, it's, I mean, maybe it is, but it's, um, it looks much larger and the shape of the leaves is a little bit different too. You can see with the light here, it has kind of some like facets on it that jelly beans don't normally have. Whoops. So I'm not really sure what it is there. Um, you'll also notice a lot of these leaves are falling off as I stick these cuttings into the soil. That's pretty normal. A bunch of the leaves fell off over the last uh, few weeks <laughs> that they were sitting out and dried off, and that's normal too. Succulents will absorb the water that's stored in those leaves to help keep it alive. One of the really cool things about succulents. It's all potted up and you can see I took some of the leaves that fell off and I have put them in the arrangement. I don't know that most of them have enough like juice left in them to propagate, but I figure we may as well leave them there and see what happens. So now I'm going to leave it again. I'm going to water it actually. I'll water it tonight and then just let it keep growing for the next few weeks and we'll see what it looks like. Here's the ghost plant that I also beheaded about three weeks ago, and it is doing well also. You can't see the babies quite as well on this one, but they are starting to grow. They're just not quite as large. I do also have a leaf baby that's growing in here. So the mother leaf has died, but it's still growing. And then a new leaf that's starting, it doesn't have a baby on it yet. And it may or may not get one, we'll see. But now it is time to repot these cuttings. And same as with the other sedum, I'm just gonna go ahead and plant these up back into this pot because I want it to just be nice and full. If you have ever ordered Bonsai Jack soil, you will have a metal chopstick. Planting cuttings is a great time to use your chopstick. You can kind of loosen up an area to make a hole. You can also use this little seed digger from our favorite 
mini succulent toolkit. So same thing, you can just use that to kind of dig in there or use the bigger end if you really need to make a bigger hole. And obviously with the bonsai jack soil, it doesn't leave a huge gap, but it does loosen up the soil enough that I can get these cuttings in there much, much better. Let's see, you can also use them at the same time. So just kind of loosen up the soil as you're putting this in, make a little hole. One thing to watch out for with ghost plant or most echeverias when you're touching them or handling them, they do have what's called a farina on it. So it's like a almost like a powdery coating. And if you touch the leaves or if the leaves bump into something, it wipes away that farina. So you can see here, this end has um, been bumped by something and so it doesn't have that little powdery coating. That powdery coating acts as a sort of sunscreen so you don't want it to come off your succulents. There's a reason why it is there. So make sure that you're avoiding that at all possible, if at all possible. And also just to note, um, if it does come off or you do touch the leaves, you know, and some of the, the farina comes off, it's not the end of the world. Just keep it in a bit more shaded area and it will be better off. So you may have to water less so that the combination of less light doesn't cause stretching. All right, there's may not be, oh, I guess we just have one more. Oh, and a few of these leaves are falling off as well as I stick them in. You can see I'm not being overly gentle with them. This one, I'm gonna pull a few of the leaves off. Those are dead or dying. This one may propagate, we shall see. I'm just gonna leave them in there. And I'm gonna stick this one over here on this side and now we have a nice full arrangement again it may not be the most attractive thing you've ever seen but once the little babies on those stems start to grow and then some of the leaf babies it will fill in really really nicely